One of the interesting things that I thought about ASCO 2018 was that there was the potential for a showdown of two positive mm -hmm. trials mm -hmm. of uh, treatments for mm -hmm. patients with advanced squamous non-small mm -hmm. cell, each with a different regimen mm -hmm. of chemotherapy combined with an immunotherapy, a checkpoint inhibitor. One of those was the Keynote 407 trial mm -hmm. of chemotherapy combined with Keytruda, pembrolizumab, and that was a very positive trial. Another we had heard going into ASCO from a press release was positive at least for an improvement in progression-free survival mm -hmm. and this study was called Empower 131 and it was a combination of uh, carboplatin and uh, abraxane chemotherapy uh, alone or compared to the same chemo with uh, Tecentric or mm -hmm. atezolizumab. And uh, we saw some results from that study that showed there was a significant improvement in progression-free survival, but no improvement in overall survival. Mm -hmm. And the results were kind of different depending on whether patients had high level or low level mm -hmm. PDL1. Mm -hmm. The trial allowed patients with anything from mm -hmm. zero uh, percent mm -hmm. PDL1 to high level. Uh, and so when you put all these patients together in the, the whole study, there was n really no impressive difference in overall survival. Uh, what are your thoughts about where this leaves the regimen? Is this treatment with carboplatin and abraxane and to centric one that would bubble up as one to think about? Uh, let me start with you, Karen. Well, um, first of all, I, I want to say that these even though they they're similar trials they are different trials in terms of the patient population in terms of the expression levels mm -hmm. all right so so as we all know it's dangerous to do cross trial comparisons here mm -hmm. um, but having said that uh, based upon just taking the trials at face value mm -hmm. I do think that um, it's hard to see where tencentric plus chemotherapy is going to fit in right. um, at this point. So, um, you know, I think we, we'll wait to see some more data, but I think it's going to be challenging in, in my personal opinion. Really largely because it's overshadowed right. by the Right, it's overshadowed the by, the, by the keynote, but I will say there were differences in the patient populations that could have accounted perhaps for the differences in the outcomes mm -hmm. that we saw. Now, again, on face value, um, certainly less uh, impressive. Less impressive. Yeah. Sandeep, what do you think? Here? Yeah, no, I agree. In my practice, I haven't seen a big difference between the available immunologics, some um, between uh, Tecentric, uh, between Amphimzy, between Opdivo, between Keytruda, and oftentimes the differences are due to the specific trials themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think to answer the specific question for patients with squamous histology, non-small cell lung cancer, uh, the results from Keynote 407, which both showed an overall survival benefit, as well as um, a benefit in progression-free survival, compared to what we saw with the Tecentric chemo study, I think many of mm -hmm. us will favor Keytruda plus chemotherapy for these patients. Um, though there is um, a scenario um, where you can combine Tecentric with a vast number of patients with non-squamous uh, that may be particularly interesting for some patients with right. non-squamous, non-small mm -hmm. cell lung cancer. Let's turn to the EMPOWER 150 trial, which was a, a study of chemotherapy uh, combined with Avastin, an anti-angiogenic uh, agent, so it blocks the tumor blood supply. The control arm was carboplatin with uh, with Taxol and Avastin, uh, one of our standard treatment approaches for patients with non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer. This trial actually allowed patients mm -hmm. with an EGFR mutation or an ALK rearrangement if they had been on and progressed mm -hmm. on a targeted therapy against that, that driver mutation. That uh, control arm or the standard treatment was compared to other arms of patients who got Carbo and Taxol and Avastin with the immunotherapy to Centric, or another arm got Carbo and Taxol without the Avastin but with to Centric. And 
Interesting results were presented at ASCO 2018. We saw uh, there was an overall improvement in survival mm -hmm. in the broader population of patients. Uh, this was independent of the level of PDL1 expression. But I think it's going to be hard to have this find a place mm -hmm. next to the, I would say, more positive mm -hmm. results with the trials that featured Keytruda. Uh, well, the one, Agreed. Keynote 189, yeah. was Carbo and Olympta and, uh, and Keytruda. That's a regimen that a lot of us favor, you no know, hair mm -hmm. loss mm -hmm. and generally well tolerated. Mm -hmm. Do you think that in the broader population of patients uh, without an EGFR mutation or ALK rearrangement, this regimen with four drugs is one that you'd favor, Cindy? I think for myself, um, you know, as patients are staying on these regimens longer, quality of life and toxicity becomes even more and more important. Um, and I think one of the things about Olympta is it's just a much easier drug for patients compared to Taxol. Um, there's no neuropathy, there's no hair loss, mm -hmm. and so for the vast majority of my patients with non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer, I would use Olympta as part of their chemotherapy mm -hmm. regimen. And so I think thinking about IM Power 150 for the non-EGFR, non-ALK patients, um, I, I don't really see a role in my practice based on side effects given what we've seen with Keynote 189 and Carboplatin, Olympta, and Keytruda. Um, but I think the patients who are EGFR ALK mutations who are looking for an immunotherapeutic mm -hmm. option because we've already discussed how a single agent PD-1 like Keytruda or Opdivo in those patients uh, is not gonna be mm -hmm. effective and can lead to more potential side mm -hmm. effects down the line. I think for that patient population, this may be um, an attractive um, regimen. Karen, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, you, you said it well. I, I really can't see a role for this in the all-comer patient population. So the patients without, without these the, driver mutations. Out without these driver mutations. Um, I do think that it does make sense to consider it for those patients, particularly with the EGFR driver mutations, um, based upon other information that we have that uh, drugs like um, Bevis's Avastin mm -hmm. uh, does have some benefit mm -hmm. in that setting with an agent like uh, Tarceva. So I think it, it, it does make sense there. Mm -hmm. And we know that patients who, once they fail all of their EGFR regimens, that again, having that option to go to something next is still very, very important for those patients. So I think it is a potential option for those patients. Over the last few years, we've seen converging evidence that these immunotherapy agents don't seem to be very effective in patients with EGFR mutations or ALK rearrangements, mm -hmm. at least if they're given as single drugs, usually as a later line of treatment. One of the interesting things about the Empower 150 trial that gave chemotherapy with Avastin and uh, either alone or compared to uh, the same chemo mm -hmm. and Avastin with Tecentric was that there was a, 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 an improvement in progression-free survival and also overall mm -hmm. survival for the patients with an EGFR mutation or mm -hmm. an ALK rearrangement, mm -hmm. although stronger in the patients with an EGFR mm -hmm. mutation. In the third arm of that same study, which uh, gave chemotherapy, but no Avastin, but did give tocentric immunotherapy, mm -hmm. the patients with an EGFR mutation or ALK rearrangement didn't mm -hmm. get that same magnitude mm -hmm. of benefit. So what do you think of this? Does this make the four drug regimen with Carbo and Taxol and Avastin and tocentric the treatment of choice? for incorporating immunotherapy for patients with a driver mutation after they have progressed on a prior targeted therapy because that was the patients who were eligible for this study? Or do you feel that we can, we can extrapolate this to other regimens of chemo and immunotherapy we'd like to use? Sandy, what do you think? I think uh, the evidence to date in 2018 is, is mixed on what the best option is for patients um, who've progressed on their best targeted therapies, especially EGFR or ALK. 
I think to date, the best evidence, in fact, the only evidence we have is with Ion Power 150, with Carboplatin, Avastin, to Centric, though that evidence is not so and strong, uh, and Taxol, uh, that will have to be um, validated in prospective studies, um, because the level of evidence isn't as strong mm -hmm. um, as we would have its uh, analysis that's done after the fact, mm -hmm. and not all patients necessarily benefited. I think, though, what this shows us, and we've seen this time and time again, is Avastin has benefits in um, these patient populations mm -hmm. uh, who have driver mutations, um, varying from keeping the tumor at a certain size and keeping it shrinking versus actually a uh, potential overall survival benefit, um, though that's been mixed. And so the idea that there may be something special about how Avastin contributes um, to immunotherapy in these patients is something that will have to be investigated further, I think. Karen, what do you think? Is, uh, the, is the Avastin a big contributor here? Well, I think um, looking at the trial, it does seem to be a big contributor here, just looking at the data that we have. Uh, but I do agree we still need to get more information on this regimen, uh, in, in my opinion. So I, I think it's certainly intriguing information, uh, but I think we, we don't really have a definitive answer about it at this point in time. Would you have a different approach for a patient with an ALK rearrangement versus EGFR? Are you less inclined to, to favor immunotherapy or this regimen for an ALK positive patient? Well, you know, there were such few patients that were ALK positive. So my answer to that is, is definitely yes. Um, I, I would not uh, favor this regimen at this time for those patients. Um, I'd have to see a lot more, more data there. I think, as I said, the EGFR data, again, when you look at what we've been talking about, we know angiogenesis plays a role right. here from other studies. Uh, we don't really have the same level of data for the ALK patient population, so I'm a little more hesitant in that patient population.